will be two triangles, which means we'll have two orders. Yeah. So uh, let's write that down. One triangle, if we order one, so if Q equals to 1D, then we'll get one triangle, right? Because this is the one large triangle strategy. If Q equals to two Ds, or rather, sorry, D over two, if we order D over two, half D every time, then we'll get two triangles in a year. So this means that we get two triangles. If we order quarter triangles, uh, sorry, quarter of the demand, annual demand every time, then of course, we, in order to reach uh, the full demand, we'll have to order four times and we should see four triangles here. So they all gel very well, which means that uh, the number of orders is really in the denominator here, right? So we can then say Q equals to D divided by number of orders of setups that we really want. And thus, it means that number of setups is just Q uh, the other way around, D divided by Q. Okay, so we have a formula now. We need to know the number of triangles, number of orders in a year. We just substitute with the formula D over Q. That would be the number of triangles in a year. And because each triangle incurs S dollars, we have the annual total setup cost in this formula fully captured. Next, we need to talk about annual holding cost. And certainly, we need to involve H, the holding cost per unit per year. In this case, uh, it's a little bit uh, less obvious what we need to do because we need to multiply by the number of units in the year, right? and uh, so so that we can get annual holding but the number of units in a year if we look at the big triangle just for clearer visibility uh, it's not that clear because rightfully we ought to be uh, spending a lot of holding costs day one and relatively zero to no holding costs on the last day just before the triangle the inventory cycle runs out and therefore what is the right amount of annual holding cost. Now the right way to think about it is that if we have more stocks per day, then we have higher per day holding cost for that quantity of tires, slightly lesser, add to even slightly lesser on the third day and add to the fourth day and add to the fifth day and so on and so forth. Now if we do that summation, right, essentially we are adding up the daily holding cost for the for that quantity of units in the warehouse. And that is correct amount for annual holding cost. The, the basic mathematical idea is therefore to integrate, right, uh, the area under the curve or under this line here, uh, because essentially our understanding here is that First of all, area of triangle is proportionate to annual holding cost. All right. So the bigger the area, the larger is the amount of holding cost, annual annual holding cost. Therefore, we need to find an average inventory level A, right? uh, such that annual holding cost is equal to uh, basically H times the average inventory level. So the average inventory level A gives us a convenient uh, summary constant, if I may use it that way, so that it is as if, all right, so A is the, the level of inventory level such that it is as if the inventory never moved at quantity A, all right, stored throughout the year, such that when we multiply by H, 
we get the annual holding uh, cost for the year. So the idea then easily becomes if we have one big triangle all right, in a year, A will be such that it is the equivalent level right, of inventory and never moved right, such that when we multiply A with H, we get annual holding cost for A items. Now, definitely we don't physically have A items. We have declining number of items uh, in our warehouse, right? We, we do not have this virtual line called average inventory level A. But what we are trying to do in introducing A is to give us an easy way to calculate annual holding, right? So A is, this little A is such that when we multiply little A with H, because A is the supposedly uh, constant level of inventory that we hold throughout the year in our warehouse, right? Not moving. And therefore, it is, it is correct to multiply by H because H was defined as uh, per unit per year and we are constantly holding A items per year, so that's correct. But to make sense out of, out of uh, our physical reality, which is that we have a declining level of inventory, we need to ensure that, or we need to make sure that A is such that, right, the area of rectangle subtended by A, right, I just write it metaphorically, is equal to the area of the... Uh, triangle when we purchase at order quantity Q with a height of Q that is. Now once we have this requirement it is easy to to uh, finish this up by saying that what's the area of rectangle and that is base which is one year times height. That must be equal to the area of rect uh, triangle at a height of Q. So that's half times base of one year times height Q. And so we easily arrived at the conclusion that the average inventory level is Q over 2 with the one years cancelled out. And we also at the same time see that regardless of whether we are talking about one big triangle across a year or multiple triangles like four triangles across a quarter of a year, the, it doesn't really matter, right? Because average inventory level, if it's true for one triangle, it is true for all triangles, and still the average inventory level makes sense throughout the year. Okay, so we have this beautiful and simple formula of A equals to Q over 2. So remember why we find A in the first place? And that is to make sure that we can have this simple notion of uh, H times A is equal to the annual holding cost. So now... Since A is Q over 2, we are not going to incur too many variables. We just simply write in uh, H times Q over 2 as the annual holding cost. All right. So, good. So, now we have this uh, simple equation to define the annual holding cost. Now, we can, uh, we need to ask, because we control Q and the rest are all constants, right? S is constant, D is assumed constant, H is constant. So, we can move Q we can change Q, we can decide on Q, such that TC is minimized. That's what we want. And the mathematical tool that allows us to, to um, think about that is basically already very well established, right? So the mathematical tool says that if we have Y uh, that is dependent on X, the, the value of x that makes y minimum is going to be found by calculus dy dx and set it to be equal to zero. So if we look at it, what we do here is then we dif differentiate right, tc against q all right, and set it to zero. Once we solve this equation, we will be able to find the best q such that tc is minimized. So to do that, we'll differentiate the right-hand side of TC, which is Q to the power of minus 1, right? So we have uh, S and D, they are constants. Q to the minus 1, when we differentiate, we get negative 1. Uh, Q to the power of minus 2, so that means we have Q squared below, plus 
this is h over 2 is a constant and q is linear when we differentiate it it's gone so we set this to be equal to 0 now we have essentially h over 2 equals to moving the negative to the other side d times s over q squared so this simply means that when we multiply uh, exchange the denominators and uh, move everything to that is not related to q to the right hand side we get this and finally we have the famous eoq formula that is always order the quantity square root of 2ds over h all right why uh, because this will minimize the total cost this is what calculus tells us yeah so essentially we have arrived at our eoq model uh, what is our eoq model remember what's the inventory model inventory policy uh, how many to order and when to order so for the eoq model or policy we have two numbers remember uh, use we will always order at square root 2ds over h all right so this is a very powerful and important and famous formula that everyone should know everyone must uh, keep in mind then we turn our attention to when to order next we have when to order in in this particular aspect when to order while well, it suggests time we are not going to use time okay because what is basically the idea is that we would just say l days before we run out of inventory we would order that's the intention but we are then talking about time time is not a very good way to uh, give instruction as to when to order because we never quite know when the inventory will run out all right here we're assuming constant demand rate known and constant demand rate so everything is well known well defined predictable and that's why we can say l days before end of inventory but this soon will change when we allow the inventory to fluctuate uh, sorry the demand to fluctuate as will always happen so in that case we will not be able to specify when because a surge in demand will just quickly uh, zero out your inventory all of a sudden in a way that is not very predictable um, so in that sense we would rather use an event driven way what is an event driven way we would rather say that uh, if we look at a triangle right, a particular triangle that when we have when we still have triangles uh, sorry inventory instead of saying l days before we run off tires to sell we say how many tires are we left such that we have to start making an order all right so in our model here because the demand rate is constant we have a very nice smooth triangle uh, therefore r is very closely related to l uh, by daily demand example one day before we get zero inventory level we should have d tires right because that's one day before and every day we sell 20 tires we should have 20 tires two days before we should have 40 tires three days before we must have eight uh, 60 tires so in some sense r is simply equal to number of days of uh demand number of demand per day times the number of days we need before the inventory reaches zero okay so in our example in our example r equals to uh what is it 20 tires per day times l three days equals to 60 tires what does this mean what does this 60 mean the 60 here refers to uh let's just have an inventory level right so we are watching our tires and currently it is at 85 tires and our r is 60 all right so being an event triggered kind of water level 
we are saying that our current level is 85 tires. Somebody bought uh, 20 tires. Okay? Because a 